save 10% with my code Bobby10. Just kidding, guys. Today's offer is much greater than a saving of 10%. I teamed up with my Muslim brothers and we created Pure Passage. Imagine sending the reward of Umrah this Ramadan to someone you really loved but had already departed from this dunya. Or they're really sick and they cannot perform Umrah at all. Imagine the feeling of honoring his or her memory and expressing your love and devotion while still ensuring that they receive this gift. The reward of performing Umrah. As a new revert, I just learned about this, but you know better than me that performing Umrah is a profound spiritual journey that most Muslims aspire to undertake and you understand the rewards of it. However, for some, this journey can be challenging, especially when their loved ones are sick or have already passed away. At Pure Passage, we understand how important it is to fulfill this obligation for your loved ones. That's why we offer our professional and reliable service to perform Umrah on behalf of your sick or deceased parents, spouse or any other relatives. We believe that everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill this sacred act even if they are unable to do so themselves and equally understand that the physical and financial challenges of performing Umrah yourself on behalf of your loved ones can be overwhelming. That's where Pure Passage comes in. We take care of everything and make sure that your loved one's Umrah is performed with the utmost care and attention to detail. So let us help you earn this immense reward for your loved ones by performing Umrah on their behalf. Contact us today and let's make it happen. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, today's video is of personal interest to me. We're going to react to what is it like being Japanese Muslim in Japan by the channel Takashi from Japan. I say this video is of personal interest to me not only because I am a recent revert to Islam, but moreover because I grew up loving Japan. It was my favorite country. To this very day, I haven't made it over there, even though I'm living in Thailand. It is not too far away, and inshallah, maybe this year, maybe next, I will finally go to my dream country. I grew up with animes. I grew up eating ramen noodle soups, Takeshi's Castle, and what not. And then after finally quitting veganism, I found the love of my life, which is sushi, sashimi, wagyu beef, teppanyaki, and all this beautiful Japanese food. So therefore, to see now that Japanese people are reverting to Islam is, of course, heartwarming to me. We all know that there is a humongous rate in Japan, unfortunately. And if you look into the Shinto religion, you will see that it's a polytheistic religion. Those people worship different deities, but atheism is on the rise as well. Two destructive ideologies that do not make you remember Allah. And we know from the Quran that in the remembrance of Allah, hearts find peace. And I personally believe that this is exactly what Japan needs. Think about this. Muslim samurais. How amazing would that be? All right, guys, with no further ado, let's have a look. Islam. Elsa, Elsa Harar Mato. So as you can see here, he says 60% of our customers are Japanese people. That is absolutely amazing. So regular Japanese people, which are probably not Muslim, get exposed to halal meat. <laughs> Poor perception of religion, period. As I said in the beginning, atheism is on the rise in Japan and therefore they have a bad perception of religion in general, not only Islam. However, what I heard so far from my Muslim brothers and sisters in Japan is that it's very easy to be a practicing Muslim in Japan. Thank God. <laughs> Elsa, Elsa Harar Mato. 
。ワイズが。ハラルニコとかあるんですが、ハラルニコ。はいはいはい。ちょっと中身見せた方がいいかもしれないね。ええー。アジアと、はい、あといろいろ国の。はい。フォースフォーインドネシア、バングラデシュ、インディア、パキスタン。はい。世界中でハラルシコジャイを。はい。流行ってます。He says halal foods are popular all over the world now. Again, 60% of our customers are Japanese people. マジですか That's amazing. Okay, I met Kaiji san.、Uh, can you introduce? Hey! Hello,、uh, my name is Kaiji from Japan.、Uh, I became Muslim in 2017, so already five years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. Amazing. Actually, I went to Brunei、uh, to study abroad.、Uh... Oh. As an exchange student. But you know, maybe later I will explain about you know, the story in detail. Today, you're going to introduce me about Muslim culture in Japan, in Tokyo. And we are now mosque here. Can you show me the you know, thing you、sure. always do here? Sure. Okay, let's start it. Let's go. The mosque. <laughs> すっごい都会にあるんですよね、これ。見てもらったら、こんな大都会の中に。そういうことです。そういうことです。そういうことです。それは、Arabs but that is not true back in the day when I started researching about Islam and I found out that the majority of Muslims on this planet are actually Asians are actually Indonesians this really shattered my world view and then later down the line I found out that out of all the Muslims worldwide the Arab population was maybe 15% something very very low so there you can see yet again how brainwashed people are No, it's not a religion only for the Arabs. Yes, it comes from Arabia, it comes from that demographic. But guess what? So does Christianity. Christianity went through Europe and adapted to the pagan holidays, to the language, Roman, to Greek, and therefore it became an interface that was well accepted by the Europeans. However, it comes from the same place. With Islam, on the other hand, it has been preserved in the original language. That That is all. And that is why the Western nationalists will tell you that Islam is an Arabic religion, not understanding the value in the preservation of the original language. The original language is Arabic. But hey, guys, think about Jesus. What was he? He was Aramaic. And Aramaic is a sister language to Arabic. It sounds very, very similar. So when Jesus said God, he did not say God because he was not American. He Was not white per se. He said Allah, which sounds pretty familiar, which sounds pretty close to Allah, of course. All of those religions are Semitic religions. Christianity adapted to the West. Judaism, on the other hand, stayed Semitic as well and stayed ethnocentric. Therefore, it is not an evangelizing religion. However, Islam and Christianity are evangelizing religions, and Islam is the only religion out of those two that stayed in the original language. It's very simple. It's all written in Arabic. アラビア語で書かれてる。アラビア語も勉強してて、読むのが右から左なんですよね。日本語と逆で。ああ、逆ですね。ええ。で文字と文字がくっつくと形が変わったりとか、僕も今本当に勉強してる。本当に最初のステ
、まあ、その中東の方でね、こう日本人のジャーナリストが殺されてしまったりとか、時代だありましたね。なので、やっぱりちょっとネガティブなイメージっていうのは、やっぱり少なからず持ってたわけですよね。うんまあ、日本で見る情報って、まあ、それしかないですよ、ね。そうですね。やっぱり、日本人からすると、イスラム教がメディアに出るときって、ネガティブなことじゃないですか。<笑>例えば、イスラム。イスラム国とかそういうネガティブなニュースでしかイスラム教を見たことがない、はいまあ、全部こうネガティブなニュースに完全につながっちゃいます、はい、ただ私がブルネイに行った時に、まあ、そのイメージっていうのが180度変わってこう今までこうメディアでしか見なかったイスラム教、まあ、ムスリムの姿っていうのをまあ、しっかりその、まあ、留学っていう形で一緒に生活したり、まあ、時間を過ごすわけですよね。そうすると彼らの信仰しているものであったりとか、考え方とか行動っていうのが、やっぱりこう少しずつ理解できるようになって、それをこう勉強していくうちに、まあ、聞かれていったというか、あの素晴らしい生き方だなというところで、えっと、実際に私も2017年に、イスラム教に回収しようと思って、まあ、回収をしたというのが経緯になります。なるほど。最初にブルネイに留学するきっかけって何なんですかね、うん、僕、聞いたことなかったんで、ブルネイに留学で。ですよね、ですよね。えっと、それもブルネイに行こうと思ってたわけではなくて、はい、えっと、まあ、東南アジアっていうのがもともと好きだったんですよね。うん、あの実はカンボジアにこう教育の支援でボランティアに行ったりとかっていうのもしてて、はい、東南アジアっていう国がいいなっていうところで、うん、あとその時まで英語が全然喋れなかったので、英語が通じるとこ、または英語が勉強できるところがいいなっていうところで、まあ、フィリピンか、まあ、ブルネイ。ブルネイはもともとイギリスの植民地だったんですよね。あそうなんですか、ねえー。第二次世界大戦、うん。なので、まあ、その英語のシステムとかっていうのが、まあ、すごい、整備されてて、まあ、そういう観点から、まあ、フィリピンかブルネイ。フィリピンっていうのもある程度想像できる国じゃないですか。でブルネイって初めて聞くし、謎めいた国だなって思って、こう、yeah, イスラムと関係なくですね。Good durian over there. 行ってみたい。まあ、行ってみようかなっていうぐらいの温度感でした。なるほど。どれくらい行かれたんですか、最初は。でも、えっと、ブルネイの留学自体は半年、ワンセミスターです。ああ、なるほど。半年で、まあ、日本に帰ってくるじゃないですか。That's plenty, man. I just spent three days or so in Malaysia and I absolutely fell in love with the people. At that time, I was still pretty Islamophobic, so therefore I said, yeah, well, they are so nice because they're Southeast Asians. However, I of course saw their beautiful culture, their beautiful tradition, and their beautiful mannerisms thanks to Islam. Just spending three days with the Malaysian people changed my perception of Islam forever. It really did. 自分はムスリムになろうっていう決断をしましたか、うん、そうですね。ブルネイから日本に戻って、はい、で、私は大学生だったので、大学にも留学生がいるんですよね、うん。ブルネイ人だったり、インドネシア人だったり、マレーシア人だったり、はい、でそういう方々にいろいろ話を聞いていって、あれってどうなのこれってどうなの話を聞いたり、とここのモスクですね。に来て、スリランカ。方からこうイスラムってこうだよっていうのをこう教えてもらったりとかっていうのを1年半ぐらいですかね続けてで、まあ、やっぱり勉強していくとその考えって抜けないんですよねなかなかなんでえっと、まあ、いずれは回収するんだろうなっていうのはどんどんどんどん考え考えていってでそこで、えーまあ、実際に回収をしたというような感じですなるほど、えっと多くの留学生は、やっぱり、例えばアメリカに留学して、アメリカに戻、アメリカから戻ってきたら日本に、やっぱり日常に戻るじゃないですか、日本の。それが、カイさんはなかったんですね。日常に戻るというよりかは、やっぱりブルネーだったりとか、その、イスラムとの関係を自ら、つなげていようとしたところですかそうですね。逆に言うと。I truly believe that if you experience that 
peace that Islam can give you, you cannot go back to the Western culture or in his case, the Japanese culture, this fast paced life, this worshiping of work almost, that work is the highest good and of course, the lack of remembrance of God. Once you saw that in Islam, once you felt that peace, you cannot go back. And moreover, once you start digging into Islam and you see Islam for what it truly is, submission to the will of God. Once you grasp that concept, it is absolutely impossible for you to become an ex-Muslim. What does that even mean? That you're now rebelling against God and this is the state that most people find themselves in unknowingly because they haven't learned to submit their will to God. This is why they are in consistent rebellion against him, seeking everything else but God, career, women, food and what not. But only Islam gives you a solution to all of those problems. It tells you worship God alone, redirect your focus towards God, away from this dunya, away from this world. What else? can give you peace, but Islam. ハイブリッドで。うん。やるにはどうしたらいいのかなっていうのをちょっと考えて やっぱりいろんな困難があると思うんですよ。日本でなるっていう。特に日本人がなるっていうことに関しては、まず周りの人間の反応はどうでした日本人の友達、大学の友達、家族しかり。えっと、ま、大学の友達に関しては、大体、
もっともう多分悪いイメージを持ってた人、逆にいいイメージを持たせるチャンスとかあったんですよ。そういうふうに考え方を変えたりとか、であと私は今自分で仕事をしているので、えっと、お祈りとかは大丈夫なんですけど、会社で働いてる人とかだと、ね、あの、そうですよね、やっぱり。ね、できない人も多かったりとか、人間関係とか、職場とか、学校とかで、えー、まあ、ジレンマを変えてる方も、多くいらっしゃいます。なるほど。と日本に来たいミスリムの方に向けて何かちょっとメッセージをかけてます。はい。ではまあ、はい、ちょっとプロモーションにはなってしまうんですけど、はい、今あの私自身2年前に、えー、まあ起業をしてキャリアダイバーシティという会社で、えー、まあ例えばインドとかまあどこでも世界の各地からあの登録いただいてるんですけれども、えー、まあ日本でまあエンジニアだったりとか、えー、まあいろんなねあの職業職種で働きたいって言ったらやっぱり多いですよね。じゃあ、日本で仕事を探したい人とかっていうムスリムの方。もそうですし、そうじゃない方も。外国人。good for him, but I was more interested in finding out about how the life is for Muslims in Japan. I thought he's gonna explain it to us how easy it is to get halal food, for example, how many mosques you have in major cities like Tokyo, etc., etc. Let's see, maybe he will still say something. 外国人みんな、はい、日本人でも大丈夫です。はい。じゃあ、ディスクリプションに。あ、ありがとうございます。サイトとか貼っておいて。はい、ありがとうございます。Alright, guys, and this is it for today's video. As I said in the end, I was really expecting him to tell us more about the life of Muslims in Japan, how easy or how hard it is. He didn't even mention things like pork. He didn't really mention how hard or how easy it is to get halal food. He didn't mention how many mosques you have for Muslims, how easy it is for Muslim tourists to navigate through Japan because of the language barrier, etc., etc. You name it. That would have been very interesting to me personally. So if we have any Muslim Japanese people watching here, please let me know in the comment section because I would really love to visit your country. As I said in the beginning, I was obsessed with Japan and I still haven't made it over there, which is kind of crazy because I've been living in Southeast Asia on and off for the past five years or so. It is absolutely insane that I've never made it over there, but Allah is the best of planners, of course. And this time by going over to Japan, I'm actually entering The country for the first time as a Muslim. That's absolutely beautiful for me. So I'm sure I'm gonna see a totally different angle. On Japan. And moreover, I have this romanticized version, of course, to spreading Islam in Japan because I really hate to see them suffer like this, to be so work obsessed and to see the rates going up. Looking into Japan, into the warrior culture of the Japanese, into the honor that the Japanese people have, I can see such strong-minded people with only one aspect missing. And that one aspect is the biggest aspect of life indeed. It is the worship of God. Imagine taking this cleansiness, this discipline, this intelligence and combining it with Islam. The Japanese would be unstoppable. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel by Patreon, for example, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you so much for your ongoing support, guys. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.